and welcome to another lesson in waves and what we learn today is what is the energy of a wave traveling along a string and two what is the power of a wave traveling in a string but before we do so i'd like you to press the subscribe button so that you can continue to get notifications on all videos from me as they get released well when we induce a wave on a straight string what we're doing is providing energy to the string to set it in motion and the moving wave transports this energy as kinetic energy and elastic potential energy and while we touched upon this in the earlier lesson let us dive deeper into each type of energy now so consider part of a string and say its mass is dm as a wave passes through it the mass oscillates transversely or you can say in the perpendicular direction along yy direction in simple harmonic motion and there is kinetic energy associated with it due to the transverse velocity again transverse velocity is nothing but the velocity in the yy direction and we know from our study of simple harmonic motion that at y is equal to zero position or earlier we call it the mean position the element has maximum transverse velocity and hence maximum kinetic energy but at extreme y positions the velocity is zero and so is the kinetic energy kinetic energy also becomes zero because we know that at extreme positions the mass comes to rest and therefore its velocity is zero because it's turning back towards the mean position here so what about the elastic potential energy well how how does the elastic potential energy of a string vary we we must understand that to create a sinusoidal wave along a straight string the wave needs to create a stretch in the string and if we see this computer simulated wave we can say that the way the beads in the strings are pulling apart is representative of the stretch we are talking about in a string of any material so as this element of mass dm and let's say length dx oscillates transversely or vertically its length must increase or decrease in a periodic fashion to enable the string to generate the sinusoidal wave form and we know that a, a length change or stretching of the string automatically results in generation of elastic potential energy quite quite like a spring when you pull a spring there is a certain potential energy which gets stored in the spring likewise when you compress a spring again the potential energy is stored in the spring but here at y is equal to y max position which is the amplitude the string is at its normal unstretched or undisturbed value dx that is it is not stretched here when it is at its maximum y position or amplitude position and therefore since it is not stretched the elastic potential energy is zero over here however at y is equal to zero position that is when it comes back to uh, the middle or at y is equal to zero it has maximum stretch and thus maximum elastic potential energy so this part is important you might want to uh, go back about 15 seconds in this video and see what i have just mentioned once again so that brings us to energy transport so we see that at y is equal to zero and auxiliating string element has maximum kinetic energy and also its maximum elastic potential energy and we can also see that at maximum displacement there is no energy associated with the string element because the string is not stretched at maximum position and its velocity or speed is also zero so as the wave moves along the string forces that are primarily in the form of tension in the string continuously do work to transfer energy from areas with energy 
to areas with no energy which are adjacencies you know the adjacent part has no energy and the energy gets transferred to that part so as we oscillate one end of the string we are continuously converting this mechanical energy and mechanical energy could be because you are uh, kind of pulling the string up and down or there's a mechanical oscillator so this mechanical energy provides the motion and stretching of the string and as the string sections oxalate vertically or perpendicular to the x-axis they have kinetic energy and elastic potential energy so as the wave moves into sections that were earlier at rest energy gets transferred to those new sections and and well what what we say is that the wave is transporting the energy along the string so let's get a little mathematical now and find what is the rate of energy transmission so if you take a small mass of length let's say dx on the string and let's say its mass is dm we can say that its kinetic energy is equal to half dm which is the mass we have taken into u square and here we should be careful that the velocity is not v which is the wave velocity in this direction but we've used the symbol u which is the velocity of the wave or rather the elements of the medium in the y y direction then we also know that the velocity here at any instant that is the transverse velocity or velocity in the y y direction is given by the formula u is equal to omega a sine kx minus omega t which essentially has been found by differentiating y with respect to t keeping x constant the way we learned in the earlier lesson and if it's confusing to you i would suggest you go back to the earlier lesson and just review this part once again now if the linear density of the string or the mass per unit length of the string is let us say mu then we can say that mu is actually equal to dm which is the mass of the small section divided by its length which is dx now using this formula and this equation we can go ahead and rewrite the equation for energy and we can write this expression as dk is equal to half into in place of dm what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write this as mu dx into the velocity square so we'll go ahead and square this expression so what we get here is omega square a square sine square kx minus omega t and well if we decide to divide both sides by dt to find the rate of transfer of energy what we'll get is dk upon dt on the left side and dx upon dt on the right hand side and dx upon dt is nothing but the wave velocity v so we can rewrite this equation again as dk upon dt is equal to half mu v into omega square into a square sine square kx minus omega t well if you have to find the average kinetic energy value or the average rate of transfer of energy we can write this expression as dk upon dt average is equal to 1 by 4 mu v omega square a square and how we've arrived at this is that we've taken the average over an integer number of wavelengths and use the fact that average value of the square of a cosine function over an integer number of periods is half so you see this expression actually becomes half and therefore you get 1 by 4 mu v omega square a square so what about the elastic potential energy well we can derive that as well but you will remember that an oscillating system such as a pendulum has the same magnitude of average kinetic energy and the average potential energy or in other words both are equal so the average potential energy 
of this small mass would also be the same as the average kinetic energy. So that brings us to what is the average power transmitted? Well, the average power, which is the average rate at which total energy is transmitted is the sum of rate of transfer of kinetic energy and potential energy. So what we can do is just take this expression and multiply it by two. So we can say that P average or the average power transmitted is equal to two times dk upon dt average. And therefore, P average is equal to 1 by 2 mu v omega square a square. So what we have here is an expression for kinetic energy or rather the average kinetic energy and this will also be the potential energy and we also have an expression for average power which is getting transmitted. So what you can see in this equation is that the power transmitted is dependent on the material and tension of the string and the factors V and A are actually dependent on the way the wave is generated. Basically what you are doing with the wave if you're shaking it with hand or some mechanical device. And well, we can say that the proportionality to the square of its amplitude and the square of angular frequency is, is kind of a general result applicable to all wave types. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.